It's, um, so we should now have our mesh from EN Grid. Um, so I've migrated to uh, Linux. So this is using OpenFoam version seven, uh, the latest one, and um, it's Ubuntu 18.04. So basically, um, the point of this video is not to be doing a huge open phone tutorial. It's really just to show to use EN Grid. So we're going to make some assumptions. So basically what we're going to do for the start point is if you just go into the tutorials directory to use simple phone and I'm just going to start with the Pitts Daily example. Um, so just copy that into your run folder and um, on the website download you I've put in the blank tutorial and the Pitts Daily modified with this. Um, it's basically just all the usual things you'll modify for the case directory, all the patch names and, and, and so on. Um, I do really recommend um, a couple of utilities which are pretty handy for, for looking at this stuff. Um, so So the first one of them is called Tree, so um, you can install that very easily on the terminal by just installing Tree, and um, if you just go to a directory you want and type Tree, it's pretty handy because it just shows us inside that folder there um, what we've got. So that, that tells you very, very quickly um, what's the difference between the contents of two folder structures, so that's that's really quite useful. So what you can do is, for example, if I open a second terminal and just point it at the original Pitts Daily and type tree, you can just side by side, just have a little look and say, okay, what's, what's happened here? So, there's a couple of things you can see. So the zero folder is, in terms of the files that are in there, is exactly the same. So this is only new files, um, not the contents of them. And you can see I've put in two scripts. So this is an all clean and an all run. And we can see that we've got a completely new directory and set of files in here, which is Polymesh. So that is just the EN Grids export that we've pasted into the Pitts Daily folder in the constant directory. So um, that basically shows you pretty clearly which files we've changed. Um, another program which is really, really good um, when it comes to looking at the next level down in terms of what's in the files is uh, meld. So um, to install that, and you can install it, just install meld, sudo apt get. And so we can do either a file comparison or a directory comparison. We've already kind of done the directory comparison. So the file comparison basically means now this and this, we choose two different files. Um, you can do three-way, but that starts to get a bit chaotic, really. So if we just point this, for example, now at two of the files, just to show you basically what's been changed. I won't go through every single one because you've got the file to have a look at yourself. Um, so if we just have a look at the new, I'll just pick um, U, so velocity, and I'll pick the same file in the original pitch daily and do compare. So it's pretty obvious what's happened here. So you can see exactly what the differences are. It's a really nice illustration of the differences between the two files. It's really, really good. Um, so basically what we can see is that um, I have changed the 
vector component of the velocity because the mesh is in a different coordinate system so I've just changed the direction that the fluid is entering um, and I've just changed the name of the upper wall to main and the lower wall front and back have been deleted because they don't exist anymore so you can just filter through those changes between the two files to see what's been altered and um, I would suggest that you uh, if you're not really experienced with open phone do try to start with the Pitts Daily one and modify it by hand because you'll get um, some good experience of what needs to be changed but if you use the meld tool and just go through them uh, in your own time it's a much better way of doing it than me sitting here going through every single value that's been changed in the, the Pitts Daily tool so we just leave that for now um, basically what we'll do is sorry wrong one so the all run script I'll just show you um, there's a lot of other stuff in there that I use for other applications, but really, it's, it's, this is an incredibly simple example. So all we actually need to do is that and that. So it's um, Python plot runner. Um, that's just plotting the residuals on the fly. So for that to work, you need um, NumPy and uh, Python installed. So um, I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. It's it's pretty straightforward. There's lots of stuff online about how to install those two things. And so basically that just goes in, I'm sorry, that just goes in front of whatever the command is to run the solver. So if you, can't, if you don't want to run the residual monitoring, um, you just um, delete that bit. You just type simple foam and power foam exactly as you would do for any simple simple foam case so that's all it's doing um, the rest of it is just related to other cases where I might be running parallel processing and so on um, or snappy hex mesh cases but I've just left it in um, the all clean is again you, you can do this um, considerably less verbosely um, I've just put all these in because I quite like having all the things in there independently so I know what's being deleted and what isn't whereas you can run just a very very simple one-liner to clean the directory and that's fine but sometimes I don't want to delete certain things so that's just why I've got this list of all the different things it's just a bit more flexible but you don't need to do that so essentially if you just take the pitch daily case and have a look at the changes put the EN grid polymesh uh, exactly as we exported it just in the constant directory name the other rename the other patches and so on you don't need to um, do anything to the uh, mesh files in polymesh at all just paste them in there that's it because we've already named the patches in EN grid so um, you just leave it um, so basically um, to run the all run script so if you didn't want to run the script you just type um, simple foam um, just in case you don't usually use scripts and you want to see what you do so you just do that and then type the name of the script which uh, script is the text file with the .sh extension um, you may have some problems with uh, file permissions in which case when you create a script file you need to do a chmod to it just google that it just is a way of giving a file permission that it can be run as an executable so if you just google dot a set dot sh script ch mod ubuntu it, there's loads of things showing you the command for that so we're just going to go all oh, run and this is going to run the script so i'm going to monitor the residuals now as well so 
And here we go with our EN grid mesh. Let's just have a look at what's going on. And if we go in the constant, uh, sorry, system control dict, we're recording right intervals 50, so every 50 time steps it will record the folder results up to a maximum of 2000 which it won't get to because it will converge by then. I've left the convergence criteria standard so that they're a bit coarse so it will converge pretty quickly. So we'll see how many iterations it takes to get to the uh, somewhat coarse default almost there. I'm obviously cheating because I know exactly how long it takes. Um, you'll notice there's a file in there with this funny name. Um, that's basically just because it's an I did have an older file, which is when in previous versions of OpenFoam you had to have a separate file in there to define the wall shear stress function, and I've just renamed that just to make sure that um, that was no longer required with the new OpenFoam version, and it isn't. Um, so all I've done to put that function in is, because um, we did go through that in the previous OpenFoam video, where we did the same mesh with uh, STL geometry with snappy hex mesh. All I've done is control dict and just pasted that at the bottom. So I've just commented out the streamlines function because I'm not interested. And so really, it's just got include funk wall shear stress. And um, it's worth pointing out that this only addresses um, meshes which are defined as wall. Um, so if you have forgotten to um, rename your patches properly and they're all defined as patch, the ball shear stress function won't show anything and that might be confusing at first. So it's worth noting that that only addresses wall named parts of the uh, mesh. So we've converged now 182 time steps and um, you can see here in the fields we've got wall shear stress available so we tick that because we want to see it and I'm just going to go apply skip to the end and we'll just have a look at the wall shear stress so we can see it there and um, so that's basically worked they seem to have got rid of that annoying bug I had with the uh, wall shear stress in the previous open foam version, although well, I think it was actually a para view bug. Um, and just as before, um, this is not in Pascals, you need to multiply it by the fluid density to get back to Pascals in open foam. And because uh, it's in meters squared over seconds squared, um, so just remember that if the numbers don't look like you're expecting them to look. And so that looks okay. So we'll just do a section through the middle of the case just to get the same view we had in the previous tutorial, just to see if it looks the same. Um, actually, the boundary conditions are very slightly different, so it will actually look fractionally different because the outlet patch has got a different boundary condition this time. So I'm going to hide the plane and there's nothing showing which it shouldn't because it's still on wall shear stress which obviously only happens at the wall and if we have a look at velocity so that looks basically pretty much the same as the last case we solved with the snappy hex mesh mesh and you can see that um, the behavior at the outlet is a bit different because um, we don't we haven't applied a continuity across the whole patch face so the flow is just going up through the middle there so that's why you don't have that sort of uh, wine glass shaped divergence um, compared to the the last snappy hex mesh tutorial and um, so this is looking a bit blocky because we're basically looking at the actual cell values um, if you want to get the interpolated smoothed values we could just click that so it looks nice 
or exactly less accurate and the same for the pressure and so it's looking as expected um, so I think we're probably pretty happy with that and um, if we have a look at the mesh obviously it looks exactly the same as it did in EN grid because that's where the mesh came from that's, um, we can just see that the the layers are very nice and so this is really what we're hoping for from EN grid so I hope you've just enjoyed that very brief little walkthrough of putting the same geometry through EN grid and running it in open foam uh, the new version open foam 7 so um, I hope you found that useful and um, I look forward to doing some more videos soon. Alright, 